Having strong legs is incredibly important for seniors. Leg strength is the key to maintaining your mobility and independence as you age. Now the bad news is that on average, people lose three to 5% of their muscle mass for every decade after 30 years old. The good news is though, that it is still possible to build and maintain muscle mass, even though you're getting older. Even better, there's a faster way to get your legs stronger just by learning to better utilize the muscle that you already have. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'll explain what that way is, plus give you some easy, actionable tips that you can start using today to get your legs stronger. Now, there are three ways to get stronger. You can add new muscle cells or muscle fibers, but that's unlikely to actually happen in human adults. The second way is to make the muscle fibers that you already have bigger. That's called hypertrophy. And you do that by adding new muscle fibrils and within that microfibrils. And that's done by laying down new proteins. That takes four to six weeks at a minimum. And furthermore, muscle is metabolically active tissue, which means there's a high energy cost to maintaining it. Now that's good for purposes of losing weight, but evolutionarily, our bodies resist doing that when it's not necessary because we're designed to maintain energy in times when food is scarce. So the third way and the fastest way to get stronger is by using more of your current muscle fibers at the same time. Think about it like trying to lift a weight with one arm and then trying to lift that same weight with two arms. It's a lot easier if you have both arms lifting at the same time. And within a muscle, you've got individual muscle fibers and muscle fibrils. And those fibers receive the message to contract from your brain. Your brain sends a message through your spinal cord and then along motor nerves. And one motor nerve may innervate several different muscle fibers. Small motor units are made of one motor nerve that interfaces a fairly few number of muscle fibers. And those tend to come on early during low energy tasks that don't require a lot of strength. Think about that like your postural muscles that just help hold you upright or the muscles that you use to do something like walking where it's not especially hard, but you have to do it for a long period of time. Then you have larger motor units that innervate lots of different muscle fibrils, and they don't get recruited until there's a high force demand. Think about this like something like running, jumping, even going upstairs. So in order to get stronger, you have to recruit a larger number of muscle fibers at the same time. Now, untrained individuals or people who aren't in the habit of exercising tend to recruit muscle fibers asynchronously. And what that means is that they'll recruit these fibers over here and then these fibers over here so that these ones can rest and then these fibers again and these fibers again. Think about it as if you and I both got in a rowboat. I would row for a little while and then you would row for a little while and I would row for a little while and you would row for a little while. And that way we can row for a longer period of time, but we can't row as fast as if we were both rowing at the same time. And so that's what we're trying to do with the exercises that I'm about to show you is getting more of your motor units firing at the same time. So there are a few ways to do this. Number one, you have to use higher levels of force than you're used to, because even just by doing more repetitions, you're just working on the endurance muscles. In order to activate the bigger motor units, you have to use relatively higher loads than you're used to using and activate more muscle groups at the same time. For this reason, compound or multi-joint exercises like squats, lunges, or leg press are ideal for recruiting a lot of different muscle groups, turning on a lot of different motor units versus exercises that you may see more in a physical therapy clinic like quad sets, just tightening your thigh or straight leg raises 
or doing kicks out against a band or against a machine. So think about using large muscle groups doing multiple joint movements at the same time. Now I'll use a squat for an example to demonstrate a couple of the specific techniques to use during these exercises. So if we're going to start out doing a chair squat, squatting down to a chair and standing back up, the lower the sitting surface or the lower the chair, the harder it is. Because as you're just down in a partial squat like this, you're not parallel to the ground. The closer you get to parallel, the greater the downward vector of gravity is. And so just going deeper makes an exercise harder. Now you may have some knee pain that limits you and you don't want to push through pain while doing these exercises. So let's start out with just a squat down to a chair. You want to sit back and push your bottom back towards the chair and then lower down slowly. It's harder to lower a weight slowly than it is to just drop down. You're decelerating the downward force of gravity. So to see that from the side, stand in front of a chair or a sitting surface, start by pushing your hips back. This will activate your glutes as well as your quads. You're also driving your knees out to the side, which will activate your gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and gluteus maximus as well. Then as you're sitting back, try to do a slow, controlled descent. If you get to a point where you hit a sticking point or you start feeling some knee pain, just hold that position. Or if you have to come up a little bit to relieve the pain, just hold that position right there. Hold for about five seconds or so, and then see if you can come down just a little bit deeper towards the chair. When you hit another sticking point, hold that for five seconds and really try to use a mind-muscle connection. Focus on feeling your quadriceps contract. Focus on feeling your glutes contract. If you are more weight on the toes, you'll notice you feel your quads a little bit more. If you're sitting back on your heels and spreading your knees a little bit more, you'll notice you feel the glutes a little bit more. So don't just go through the motions, so to speak. Actually try to feel the muscles that you're working while you're doing these eccentrics, meaning lowering, and isometric holds, meaning staying in one place. Come down a little bit lower, and then hold for another five seconds. And then when you get all the way down to the chair, just lightly rest your bottom on it, but still keep your feet driven down into the ground so you're keeping the muscle tension on. Now when you go to stand back up, that's just the reverse of lowering. It's easier, takes less force to stand up slowly because you're just barely overcoming gravity. It takes more force to pop up quickly. So try to do a slow eccentric, lowering down, do an isometric hold when you start to hit a sticking point, hold for about five seconds, and then lower a little bit farther, hold, lower a little farther, and then hold. If you can't quite get down to a chair, you can put a pillow or a cushion underneath your bottom so that you kind of find that bottom out position. Or if you can go deeper than that, you can hold on to the back of a piece of furniture or a kitchen counter. I wouldn't use something like this that can tip over, but then sit back, sit back, sit back, hold it, go a little deeper, sit back, sit back, sit back. Hold it, keep lowering down until you find your maximum depth. And then you can use the counter, the furniture. Again, make sure it's something sturdy to help you accelerate back up quickly. Then lower down slowly, hold it, turn out, squeeze the glutes, feel the muscles work, lower down. A little farther, hold it, feel the muscles work, and then go down farther again, hold it, and then try to come back up as quickly as you can. 
So that's the first technique, the slow eccentric, isometric hold, and then fast concentric or rising back up. Now, the next thing is the overload principle, that if you've gotten good at doing this, eventually you do need to add weight. And that's particularly important if you want to start to hypertrophy to actually build new muscle tissue or make the muscle cells you already have stronger. But it also recruits more motor units or more of the fast twitch motor units when you start to add weight. So to do that, you can do a dumbbell squat. And basically the movement pattern is the same. Go down slow, hold the bottom position, and then drive back up fast. Go down slow, hold the bottom position, and then come back up fast. If you just wanna go through repetitions using the weight, that is okay if you're starting to add weight. You may not necessarily be able to do that slow hold fast up, but go down in a controlled manner and then do try to come back up as quickly as you're able to. Now, another way that you can add resistance is by switching from two legs to one leg. When you go from a squat where you have roughly 50% of your body weight on each leg to a lunge, now you have about 80 to 90% on the front leg. So that automatically increases your resistance without adding any actual external weight. To do a lunge, you can also focus more on a quad focus or a glute focus, depending on how you do the exercise. If you do a lunge where your knee is going forwards over your toe like that, that puts a lot more quad emphasis. It makes it more of a knee axis of rotation versus if you're sitting back a little bit farther with your knee behind your toes and coming down like this, now it's more of a hip extension or a hip axis of rotation. To see that on the other leg, coming down this way, more of a quad emphasis. Coming down this way, there's more of a glute emphasis. Now, whichever way you do it, you also activate more motor units doing a lunge because you also have to control the side to side angle of your leg. So this calls in your gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscles a lot more than on a squat because you're counterbalanced on each side. So you'll activate those smaller stabilizing muscles more when you switch from doing a two leg exercise to a one leg exercise. And then if you're really advanced, you can start to pick your other leg up and do more of like a single leg squat where everything 100% is now on the front leg. By using the tips to improve your muscular recruitment shown in this video, you can see some fast strength gains, often in as little as one to two sessions. That's the reason why beginners who are just starting to lift weights often see incredibly rapid gains in strength because they're learning to use their muscles better. But that rapid gain does eventually plateau off. When you've optimized your neuromuscular recruitment, eventually you do have to add new muscle mass if you want to continue to gain strength. And that again requires laying down new protein. Now, in order to lay down new protein, you need to be taking in enough protein. And many seniors get deficient in protein in their diets. To learn how much protein you need, and tips to get it in, check out this video over here. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.